Hi, this is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know, www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Welcome to Morning Mindset Cafe, where today we are discussing success through a positive mental attitude, written by Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone. The book I have in hand was printed in 1969. There are other copies, of course, around the internet world and bookstores. And for those in the live stream with me in the program, there is a PDF to download. Today I titled uh, the program as You Were Born a Champion. And that's because in the chapter, chapter two of You Can Change Your World, there's a small section about what uh, that ends with. Here's proof that we were born for victory. First, I want to preface it with this story that always strikes me as a, as a great visual. And if I were one for props, I would have a prop in front of me to show you, but I don't think you need it. I don't think you need it. So again, in the book, near the beginning of chapter two, You Can Change Your World, is a lesson learned from a child. And it's a story of a little boy. And actually, it's a story of a minister and his little boy. And there was a Saturday morning, he was trying to prepare his sermon, and there were difficult conditions. His wife was shopping, it was a rainy day, so his young son was restless and bored and didn't have anything to do. Uh, <clears throat> and we all know what that's like, right? That means a minister can't focus his attention, constantly distracted by this young man or young boy. Finally, in desperation, the minister picks up an old magazine, thumbs through it until he comes to a large, brightly colored picture. And it showed a map of the world. So he tears the page from the magazine, rips it into little bits, and throws the scraps all over the living room floor, and then says, Johnny, if you can put this all together, I'll give you a quarter. You know, the minister thought this would take Johnny most of the morning. I think he actually hoped it would take most of the morning to do this. But within 10 minutes, there, <clears throat> there was a knock on his, on his office door. It was his son, Johnny, with the completed puzzle. The minister was amazed to see Johnny finish so soon with the pieces of paper neatly arranged and the map of the world back in order. Son, how did you get that done so fast, he asked. Oh, said Johnny, it was easy. On the other side, there was a picture of a man. I just put a piece of paper on the bottom, put the picture of the man together, put a piece of paper on top, and then turned it over. I figured that if I got the man right, the world would be right. The minister smiled and handed his son a quarter. And you've given me my sermon for tomorrow. If a man is right, his world will be right. And that is is a great lesson, isn't it? There's a great lesson in that idea. If I am unhappy with my world and I want to change it, the place to start with is me. If I am right, my world will be right. If you are right, your world will be right. This is what positive mental attitude is all about. When you have a positive mental attitude, the problems of your world tend to bow before you instead of you bowing from the weight of the problems of the world. And as Matt so eloquently says, as within, so without. Yes. So this leads us, right? Have that in mind, that if I am right on the inside, my world is right. If you are right on the inside, your world is right. Now let's go to you were born a champion. Have you ever thought about the battles you won before you were born? I admit I have not. I admit I have not considered the battles that I won before I was born. An expert on genetics says, stop and think about yourself. Stop and think for a moment. In all the history of the world, there was never anyone else exactly like you. And in all the infinity of time to come, there will never be another you are a very special person. And many struggles took place 
that had to be successfully concluded in order to produce you. Just think. Tens of millions of sperm cells participated in a great battle, yet only one of them won. The one that made you. It was a great race to reach a single object, a precious egg containing a tiny nucleus. The goal for which the sperms were competing was smaller in size than the point of a needle. And each sperm was so small it would have to be magnified thousands of times before it could be seen by the human eye. And yet, it is on this microscopic level that your life's most decisive battle was fought. The head of each of the millions of sperms contained a precious cargo of 24 chromosomes, just as there were 24 in the tiny nucleus of the egg. Each chromosome was composed of a jelly-like beads closely strung together. Each bead contained hundreds of genes to which scientists attribute all the factors of your heredity. The chromosomes in the sperm comprised all the heredity materials and tendencies contributed by your father and his ancestors. Those in the egg nucleus, the inheritable traits of your mother and her ancestors. Your mother and father themselves represents the culmination of over two billion years of victory in the battle to survive. And then one particular sperm, the fastest, the healthiest, the winner, united with the waiting egg to form one tiny living cell. The life of the most important living person had begun. You had become a champion over the most staggering odds you will ever, ever have to face. For all practical purposes, you had inherited from the vast reservoir of the past all the potential abilities and powers you need. All, all the potential abilities and powers you need to achieve your objectives. You were born to be a champion. And no matter what obstacles and difficulties lie in your way, they are not one-tenth so great as the ones that have already been overcome at the moment of your conception. Victory is built in to every living person. That struck me. I don't know if how it struck you. I want to know how it struck you. Welcome, Sharice and Catherine. Welcome, Cindy. Good to see you, Alfredo. Alfredo, I was thinking of you when you dropped in, and we were talking when I was talking about uh, conception. You know, just here you have the new baby in the house, and I'm sure it strikes you as how unique and awesome that new life is. I mean, this, this, the, the beginning of what I just read was, yeah, we are pre-programmed to be unique. We are pre-programmed to be champions, aren't we? We are pre-programmed to win. It's up here that gets in our way. It's up here that we decide that um, we're going to think differently than what we were pre-programmed for. I'd not seen visualized the battle to be born, if you will, the battle to conception, quite that way. And that struck me. I was able to visualize it as I was reading it as, um, you know, let's get down to the nitty gritty into the details, right? Let's go into the details. And then, of course, the previous story, that's a reminder to all of us that when I am right, my world is right. When you are right, the world is right. When you are put together on the inside, your world is much more complete. Right? The world, the people around us, even sometimes our own education covers up that uniqueness and makes it difficult to help it grow. And that's why we are here. Yes. We're born perfect, whole, and complete. Yes. That is who we are. I am perfectly me. I always, you know, there was a, a time many, 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 many years ago that I struggled with the idea that I would never be perfect. And then I was in my 20s. And that is when I, I uh, came to the realization 
and it has to do with my personal religion and my faith that I am perfect. I am I am perfectly me according to how my creator made me. It's not up to you to determine what is perfect about me. And that was very freeing when I learned that one, when I began to believe that. Perfect is not everything is how we want it. It's accepting that we are who we are, embracing our imperfections. Well, see, there's the... What's an imperfection? What is an imperfection? The faults we see in ourselves. See, how about... How about this? Maybe a different way to look at it is rather than see it as faults, as <clears throat> imperfections or flaws, maybe we can look at them as shortcomings and really when we're looking at I, I, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, when we're talking about imperfection, flaws, or faults, aren't we talking about our character? We're talking about the essence of who we are, our personality, how we see the world, how we interact in the world. Um, we're not talking about our bodies, generally speaking. If we're talking about our thinking and how we see ourselves in the world and all that, if we change the wording to simply say that these are our, uh, you know, character shortcomings that I notice, and I only notice them because I would prefer that they not be there, and I would want to be better than this, or to remove them or change them out for something else, that's part of growth. And yet still, at any particular moment, right now, here I sit, Charlene Burke, in my guide's eyes, I am perfect. It is only me who sees anything other than perfect. Now we can go into philosophy, right? <clears throat> My faith says that I am made this way to see the gaps, to see the shortcomings, so that I can use my own free will to determine how I want to build my character. That's about as simple as I'm going to put it. <laughs> Oh, so, but it also goes back to, um, I had to learn that I can create myself, meaning I can take the foundation that I was given, all that came together to make me when I was born, that the free will was provided to me, and the ability was to create myself, that I wasn't just born knowing. See, I thought that at one time. I had that fixed mindset. I was born knowing. What I was born with was what I had, and that was it. There was no way to be more than what I was born with. And my experience in that thinking has been that it wasn't true for me. When I, when I developed a growth mindset, when I uh, saw that I could be, I could do whatever I wanted to do, that the only limitation was up in my mind, it still is only in my mind, <clears throat> then I realized that personal development is really important. I have a lot of people still in that fixed mindset, and I I'm, I'm totally understand how some things appear impossible. And yet all we have to do is just change how we see something and then it becomes possible. I mean, really, is it possible for somebody who's in a, a paraplegic in a wheelchair to drive a motorcycle or to experience riding a motorcycle safely? 
course it is if you put your mind to it and see them driving or riding it differently than a non-paraplegic person. But you have to think differently in order to see that, right? All right, so the point of this morning to me is my takeaway is that I was born a champion. And though I can't physically recall it or mentally recall it as an experience that I can say this is what happened in my life, I can understand that a lot went on in order for me to be born. And if I sit on that for a moment, I also realize that um, there's a lot to work with here. I'm not limited. And if I doubt right now that I'm capable of winning, sit for a minute, take a breath, take a step back, and recall the last time I won at something. That it's not limited to just right now. I can look on past experiences. Having some great things coming out of the chat here. We have, um, I think we each define perfect and imperfect differently. If we can accept our imperfections as something that adds uniqueness to our perfection, then it all makes us perfect. Uh, okay. Yes, our character, that may not even be close to what others see. I'm my worst judge of myself. Yes. Me too. God sees the perfection he created. We see the imperfections we have created. Well, isn't that interesting? He sees the perfection he created. We see the imperfections we have created. Oh, and fun along the way is the most important thing for me. Accepting and finding happiness in all of it, including the me I am working on bettering. <laughs> okay. You know, it, it, typing it isn't nearly as difficult as saying it sometimes. <laughs> I hope I don't mangle this too much. We get to create and recreate each and every moment. Our thoughts are what get in the way. The damn neocortex gets me every time. And yet, and yet, when we understand mindfulness and being here right now, like you are with me, those who have joined me to this point, how wonderful is it when we are able to focus our attention on something like, I was born a champion. I already feel better just thinking that. Saying it out loud, I feel better. What a way to start the day. What a way to start the day. I was born a champion. And I can take that feeling with me to the day, and that's that positive feeling, but also the positive mental attitude that says, if I was born a champion, that means that I have the ability and capabilities of tackling any problem that comes my way today, or obstacle, or speed bump, whatever you want to call it. Because I was born with the help of something else, an infinite intelligence. This is where my mind goes, right? I wasn't just by myself, was I? No. So I can tap into that other, into that infinite intelligence. And in my world, that intelligence is God. I can tap into that. I can tap into the energies, experiences, knowledge, and beliefs of those around me to help me tackle whatever might come my way. Because we can find the answer, can't we? Because I was born a champion. Well, how's that for something to take through the day? I think it's pretty darn awesome myself. Oh, and then we have Betsy the doula. We can, you can experience your birth, actually. There are many professionals who can guide you to go back and experience to be able to move forward. That would be a fascinating experience. And actually, I wouldn't object to it because according to my mother, I was a pretty easy birth. I was a firstborn, really big kid, perfectly round head, 45 minutes from first labor pain until I showed up. Almost didn't make it to the elevator in the in the hospital. She said, which absolutely amazed me, as small as a woman as she is. And it was like, boom, I was almost a 10-pounder. All three wee kids were. We were all like that. 
Let's see here. My spiritual belief says I'm made in the image and likeness of God, and therefore I am perfect. It is I in this human form who forgets that and therefore does not take full advantage of that perfection. Mm. So that goes back to our thinking, doesn't it? A am I right? That's That goes back to, I mean, your spiritual belief. This is your faith that I hear you saying. In your faith, you are made in the image and likeness of God, and therefore you are perfect. It is only your thinking that prevents you from seeing that and believing that of yourself at any given moment. And that's what we're doing here, is to remind ourselves. I was born a champion, therefore I am a champion because I am still in that life. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to have Betsy explain this to me later. I was just remembering James's birth, her son, made me realize why he is the way he is. Go Charlene's mom. Okay. So aren't these interesting concepts and thoughts coming out of this? Feel free. As you know, I mean, it doesn't matter what your faith belief is. It doesn't matter what your experience is. If you don't believe you were born a champion, fine share that with us. I'm not here to convince you of anything except to share the ideas that I can take with me through the day. And hopefully you can take something from today that will guide your mind towards moving you forward, whatever that may be. So any other thoughts? Do you recall the story of... Uh, you know, the, the picture of the world that was torn up into lots of little bitty pieces and the little boy that was able to put it all together in 10 minutes, right? I want you to, I, that's what I want you to picture. Let's picture that for a second. If I have, a, it, doesn't even, it doesn't have to be big, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I have all kinds of paper in my office here and yet, and yet, it all has something on there. All right, here we go. So I want you to imagine this. We have a piece of paper. I want you to imagine that there's a, a picture, like a map of the world on here. And so to tear it up quickly into little pieces, we can start here, right? And we have all these itty, you see how itty bitty little pieces we have, right? I mean, itty bitty. We're not talking big pieces here, okay? We, we just aren't. We're talking all kinds. So now I have this pile. I want you to imagine this big pile. Little bitty pieces. And you throw them on the floor. And a 10-year-old boy, or a little boy, I'm sorry, a little boy. I'm not going to say ton. Let's say somebody under 13. Little boy, young son. Assumption is less than, it, not quite teenager, is able to put all these pieces together so that with some tape, he's able to bring it back and the world, the map of the world, is all put together. And when asked how you were able to do that, he says on the back was a picture of a man. So all I did was make sure the man was okay, put him together, and the world was all right. So, of course, the takeaway there is that when I'm okay, my world is okay, and I can be okay. I can be right. I can be pulled together. I can be strong, and I can be focused, and I can be better, and I can be more than what I was yesterday and the day before <sighs> because I was born a champion. <laughs> See, I like that idea. I do. I like that idea. I like the idea that um, I was born to win. Because it doesn't say, this doesn't tell me I was born with all the answers, which is kind of what I thought years ago. That's not what it tells me. It tells me that I was born with the capability to win and that I was born with a brain and ability to utilize 
others whatever was necessary in order for me to win. And in the growing, I went away, but now I'm back. <laughs> I never do check the recordings to see if, um, to see how that looks when I go away, if it's all that dead time or stops and starts again. So yeah, I'm back. All right. So what do you guys think? Um, yesterday there were no recordings. Ah, no, I had recordings and uploaded it to YouTube. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a email with a recording and did not hear from my VA that there wasn't one. All right. Oh goodness, I was born to be extraordinary. Most amazing thing is that your extraordinary does not take away from my extraordinary, which means that I'm free to encourage you without limiting me. Oh, nice, nice thought. Just because it's now in little pieces does not change the fact it's still paper. Because of the tiny size might not be useful in the same form as the big size, but it's still useful. Huh. How interesting is this? I often forget that my pieces are not like everyone else, and therefore I may need to be serving a different purpose. Ah. Huh. I might want to be like someone else and can use them as a role model, but I do not need to and can't be exactly like them because I have different people. And we're all, and we are all pieces of the big paper, a different purpose, but I am you and you are me. You have to find your own way. Okay. Great thoughts. Great thoughts. What else we got? What else do we have? Born a champion. You have it in you. Isn't it something that I that uh, so many people say? You know, you already have it in you. And so many of us simply need a little map to figure out, well, where is it and how do I use it? Some people laugh and say that we need an instruction manual that follows us through our life. And I say, you know what, there are people who have come before me who have written the manual. And one of them is Napoleon Hill with Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. Yeah. Um, so rather than, hmm, sit and bemoan the fact, negative mental attitude, sit and bemoan the fact that I can come with an owner's manual or instruction manual and say, well, then, you know, this is all there is. Say with a positive mental attitude that, you know what, there are plenty of those around me who have gone before me and are where I'd like to be. So hmm, I need to be willing to extend the effort to learn how they did that. And that's what we're doing this morning, isn't it? Uh, I have to get to a place of willingness where I'm willing to apply what I see in others and learn from others until then I will struggle. Yes, yes. Getting to the position of willingness isn't nearly as difficult as the actual activity and the action. Although willingness is the first step for me. I recognize that there's something I want that I don't have right now 
It could be a character trait. It could be a skill. It could be um, knowledge, you know. But am I willing to do what needs to be done in order to obtain that? Then all the rest comes into play. All the rest comes into play, doesn't it? So if I remember that I was born a champion, amazing how much easier it is to think that well, if I have the willingness, then of course I'm going to be able to do something or of course I'm going to be able to learn something or of course I'm going to be able to, I mean, of course, it's kind of like this given that comes to my mind. And this is what I'm feeling as I say, I was born a champion. I was born to win. So that means to me that, well, just because I don't have it now doesn't mean I can't get it. And just because um, it's not happening around right now doesn't mean it's not possible. Okay. That's what I get out of what we've discussed, what we've read. I call it discussion because you're sharing in the chat. Anybody wants to jump in to live stream, please feel free to do so. You know the seat's open. It's just a matter of jumping in and, and joining the conversation. I think I can is only the beginning. I have to believe that I can and then I have to do. Hmm. Start somewhere, doesn't it? I can start with the thinking. There she is. Hi, Betsy. You get tired of me. You have to like say, you know, I'm going to hang up oh, on you. Why now. would I get tired of you? No. no. <laughs> I let different people go in, but I, you know, I like to talk. I like but it when you talk. I like the conversation. And it does, I love, you know, it's great starting the day this way. Went on live this morning and gave you a little plug, but I don't know if anyone was awake. <laughs> oh, did I make it to Facebook Live with you? <laughs> yeah, I mentioned You're you. awesome. Thank you. Uh, but um, I was going to respond to something that was over there. Now I don't remember. But um, oh, you said something about the impossible. Mm. So, yeah, and I have this thing that my dad gave me, and it says the impossible is something that. Um, Something that can't be done until you do it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm learning more and more just how true that is. Because if I get it out of my own mind and I look at somebody else, right? And I say, well, wait a minute. They they figured it out. Just because yeah. I can't figure it out doesn't mean it's impossible. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's what we tell ourselves. Or that's what I tell myself sometimes. I've been but see, the... But there's the beauty of being able to tap into somebody else's brain, isn't it? Yes. Or to yes. bring together a team that says, well, just because I don't know doesn't mean it's not out there somewhere. Yeah, and I don't think we're supposed to be, like, doing this life alone. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily mean that, oh, you have to have a mate or, you know, whatever. But, we, you know, you talk a lot about in business like a team. I mean, yes, I believe we're all born champions. And, yes, we each have a purpose. I totally believe that. But at the same time, we really are all connected and, you know, as, as the human race and there's a lot of disconnect. And, and I know that, you know, like when I feel disconnected, then I, then I get to say, okay, how can I connect? And, you know, like we've talked about this, we have this connection here, but that true connection, I was talking about this yesterday with someone else as well, that like the kids today, they're so plugged in and even they'll be in the same room. So are we individuals? Yes, we are, but I, but I believe that it kind of sets us up sometimes like in school where, oh, you know, compete and get the A, and it doesn't set up for that team. Like we could be champions together, like we don't have to be on an island. I don't know. I am an individual, and I am a champion, and that is what I bring to the table and what I bring to the room and what I bring to the relationship with anybody that I'm connected with. And you were born a champion and you are an individual and that's what you are bringing to me. And it's in the relationship that we both get better and that we both grow. I don't think there's a but. 
Yeah, I really is- don't. I, a butt negates, right? So in yeah. my mind. So yeah. what I'm hearing you say is that I am who I am. And when I find those that value who I am and the champion that I am, as I value them, and I've never done this, I've never spoken like this, but okay. but I value the champion in you, right? It's still a relationship. It doesn't mean that all that is to be done in my life is to be done solely by me. But I have to be a part of it. And I have to take the action. I have to be a part of it. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not disagreeing. I'm just I'm kind of, you know, I'm always thinking. I know. <laughs> that's what I, that's and you know I am because we're, we are getting into into this philosophical and just general mind flow free thought kind of experience which is fantastic I always balk and put a wall up and feel an obstacle when somebody tries to put me into a position of not being an individual but of being as part of a collective which means that I do not have the capability of making my own choices, that it must rely on what the collective makes. So that's the framework I come in with. Okay. So you know. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I guess I'm, yeah, so I'm uh, thinking about it completely differently, And I guess. The mm-hmm. whole, when I say, you know, we're one because of my beliefs, and I believe we're all from the same energy. So like when you turn us inside out, we're all the same. Uh-huh. So we kind of all have that belief from an itty bitty age. Like when you talk about the champions, sometimes it brings up the whole like competitive, you know, like I got the A, I'm in the honor roll, or I was the star of the team, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. So I'm not saying it's bad, but it kind of, it can set, it can set you up for the whole, you know, like I got to achieve like all by myself. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And yet, there are things that I will be better in than Mm -hmm. you. Right. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I am competitive by nature. And it spurs me to be better when I'm placed in a room with somebody who is at the same level or slightly above where I am now, I the, the competitor in me comes out and says, mm, I want to meet or beat you, <laughs> whatever that may be. And it's um, an urge, again, for me to be better. It's not to put you down. It is to, um, I want to be the one on top. I want to be the one ahead. I want to be the one up front. I want to be the one. I am a sucker for awards. You know that? You (laughs) give me a ribbon and it's amazing what I will do. (laughs) It's just, I'm so easy. (laughs) So let me ask you this then. So do you think, you said competitive by nature. So do you think that humans are innately competitive? I don't speak for all humans. Okay. I don't speak for all humans. I only know myself. Yeah. I was just asking because it made me think about that. You know, I I was, I was of the, uh, my nature was very, very quiet, very reserved, um, quite content, according to all the stories of what life was like with Charlene the first few years. Um, Put me in a corner and I, I could occupy myself without any difficulty wasn't a problem could still do it today quite honestly um not inclined to connect with others not inclined to and nor when i say inclined did not come easy and still doesn't come very easily um but that's who i am yeah so i mean we're born with a temperament like that's an absolute yeah, well, that, and that's where I'm going with it. Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I bring, you know. And sometimes I have to temper that, and sometimes it gets when it gets in my way of what I want, which it has, which is why I have been willing to temper it 
or to replace some things that I was able to replace um, to learn new skills. You know, I'm, you know I, I did. You're open. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I did. Um, but if we're going to be pitted against each other, I will win <laughs> or I do mean, what I, needs to be done to win that is legal, that, that breaks no laws of human nature or universal laws, and that, you know, I'm, I don't believe in lying, cheating, or stealing. All right. So if it means that I have to um, spend a week working out, I will do that if it's a physical competition. I was going to ask about swimming. Like, okay, how, how good oh, are you? Oh, I was a swimmer. I oh, was a swimmer. I'm not today, but I was a competitive swimmer, actually. Yeah, and I swam. It tells you how strong my legs were. I was. I swam um, butterfly oh, and, wow. yeah, and breaststroke. I was a competitive swimmer. Butterfly, say no more. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was all because I had the power in my legs. Yeah, the butterfly. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, I guess so that goes back to my nature. I'm just, I'm really not. Competitive. Although I used, I am with myself, like with myself, I'm always, you know, kind of, I, maybe that's why I do the individual. Too. See, and I really never was with myself. Yeah. I yeah. had to learn what that looked like. I had to learn what that meant. It was always because how, how can I measure my success if I'm not measuring it against somebody else? And it's still true today. Because I do gauge the success, the goal that I have set out here is gauged against who else is out here and what are they doing. And that's where I often get the motivation to keep moving forward is because I'm seeing somebody else who made it through. I'm that's seeing somebody else who did it, right? Right. So right. the reminder today is that we can. The reminder of this we were born a champion is that, listen, it's already in us. It's a matter of tapping in and being able to see outside to say this is this is where I need to go and if I don't have the answer of the how who what where I haven't I have people available to me right these other principles come into play that's my yeah, so, yeah instead of NMA where sometimes I will go you know as we all can do um well why you know aren't I there yet like why are they doing this now? instead of okay how I mean, I do it, but I catch myself sometimes with that. So I know that's NMA and PMA. Yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking of the competition, the competitor in me. I love to shoot pool. Yes. And honestly, the, when I'm shooting pool, most of the time, I am truly there to relax, to have a good time, to enjoy the game. The competitor in me isn't very strong because I do it on purpose and I tell myself why I am there tournament time the competitor comes out you know and I'm 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 a you know I'm a good competitor I appreciate quality when I see it I spur on my you know I don't trash talk I, I don't I just don't I do that. You make a great shot. Hot dog. I think that's fantastic. Now I'm just going to make a better one. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's what happens to me. Now yeah. I'm seeing where what I need to do better in order to win the game. And if I have to, it, it, it has nothing to do with anything personal. Meaning, again, I don't get into trash talk and I don't get into distractions. See, that's breaking rules. That's crossing lines. To me, I'm right there when the last uh, tournament I was in, actually, there was a gal that um, was handicapped to be, um, you know, like handicap in bowling. We have handicaps in pool players. And she was so far ahead of me that I could have been intimidated just by her, the skill level that this number said she was. But I said, no, I'm just playing my game. This is my game. And you're in my way, and I want to win. <laughs> That's what it was. And I was doing so well that I had people contacting the pool hall, my home pool hall, saying, You can't, you, you need to be watching Charlene. She's never, I've never seen her play like this. And I'm thinking all the while to myself, No, I can always play like this. 
the problem comes in that I don't, I, what's the purpose of my shooting pool in the team setting? See, my captain knows this. My captain knows this. He knows that I'm not there every Sunday to win every single time. And he's okay with that. But sometimes even he will say, I need you to win. So, okay. And I take a step back and I take a breath and I let the competitor come out and say, all right. Because what it, I have to focus my attention on just shooting each shot. There's no play anymore. And there's no discussion between me and you, anything other than what just happened on the table. So, but it can be done and you can still have a good time and you can come out winning and come out with the awards. Trust me, I got, I got them out there. <laughs> and there's my husband who says, you got another patch, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> got my little stack going up. <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking about, thinking about champion and back to even what, you know, when you were talking about all that, relating it to so you know our thoughts so we get to be champions of our thoughts you know, because that's cool you know oh yeah right so yeah so wherever we apply it whether it's in the pool hall or the business or our relationships you know because we're talking about our thoughts you know it all starting with you know like what's going on in here so to be kind of on top of that since we know that's the only thing we really can, you know, control, that then sets mm -hmm. off, and then sets off who knows what, like with relationships, right? So if we can champion our thoughts in our head, and yeah, just something to think about. I, Some you know, good stuff to think about. <laughs> good stuff to think about. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just I'm recalling. Um, there was a time when I didn't know how to enjoy just playing a game. There, there was a, I mean, there, were, there literally was a time when why are we, why are we shooting pool, shooting hoops, playing softball, swimming, mm. if I'm not there to win? Bowling was another big one. I was a very, very good bowler. I was a competitive bowler starting, started bowling when I was about eight years old. And by the time I was 12, I was in the senior ladies league and I was the anchor because they knew they could count on me to bring it out so we could win. It, that's funny because. But I know, never had, it, to me it was fun, but nobody had fun around me because yes. I didn't Did talk. Play? I didn't joke. I didn't, you just, you, you know, I'm in my world. I know what needs to be done and it will get done and we will get those trophies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Regional champs, right? State of it, state of Michigan championship. I had box my husband. Boxes wow. and boxes of trophies. God, are we moving these again? Yes, dear. <laughs> but so it's interesting because that it's about, it goes back also to intention. Uh -huh. um, it does, doesn't it? You know, and that, you know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm just about having fun. You know, do I want to win? Yeah, that's fun to win. Uh, you know, I play Mahjong with a group of women. Uh -huh. I don't know if you're familiar, but it's a really fun game, you know, gets the mind going. And so we are so much in the conversation that we forget, like, whose turn is it? And, oh, do right. we do this? Oh, well, just do this. But we're having so much fun. And we, yep, we say I can we're do that. baby, you know, baby Mahjong group. Like, we don't play for money. One time we played for money, and it got so intense with a couple people. We said never again. I mean, they were. Yeah, like, we, like, that would be me. Yeah, we started talking and somebody was like, Whoa! and it was like, okay, no way. This is a fun it Well, it changes. You're absolutely correct. What is our intention of what we're bringing to the day, to the morning, to the competition, whatever it may be? To me, it is about um, when, when, I, when I say uh, the competitor comes out, it is about winning. I mm -hmm. value putting my skills to the test, being challenged and coming out ahead and saying that, yes, to me, that's an accomplishment. That's a success. I did it. I not only met the expectation of myself and those of my team, I exceeded. And that's really when there's a great sense of satisfaction is when I've exceeded the expectations. You know? And that's part of to me, that is part of growing and succeeding. Um, 
again, your intentions. I love what you said because I can, I go on Sunday nights and I can go, I do go in intentions of I'm there to have a good time. I am. And so, and this, and skill level still there. It's just that I'm not so focused that I can't have a good time. That's all. So what that means is that I pretty much, I, I have a, I have pretty good stats. They could be better. But I remind myself even right now, as I said it, that the whole point of being on that team is for me to relax. Because my first thought was, yeah, it could be better. And if I, all I have to do is just pay attention and I could have, I could have a 90% or above win rate. Hmm. But the trade-off is that it takes away from my whole point of being a member of that team. Right. So, so it does come back to the choices that we make and everything that we do, doesn't it? Yeah, being a champion, you know, may mean winning and it may just mean accomplishing what you set out to do, whatever that is. You know, I, I championed the day because I committed to, you know, whatever it is. And, oh, my gosh, you look back, wow, I really, I did. I did that today. Now, see, and for me, even <laughs> this surprised my husband when I, sh when I joined the pool team. And my intention was I had to learn how to really just be there to enjoy myself. And I can continually do that. He's having fun watching me these past four years, having been a member of that team. He says, you didn't win. I said, no. And he said, well, he can tell. I'm a little annoyed. Yeah. I'm a little annoyed. A little. You know? But when we when he says that, yeah, when I'm not angry and I'm not caught up in it, and I'm oh, <laughs> I'm just, listen, I'm a competitor. When I allow myself, and that's my intention, is to win, and I don't, I replay every single throw, every single stroke, every single step, every movement to see what I need to change in order to be better the next time. I'm just telling you. But that's not my intention when I go on Sunday night. So when I do come back and I say, no, I didn't win. And he, he sees it and he says, you know, yeah, but you had a good time, didn't you? It's actually, you know, and that's my reminder. Yeah, I did. And that was the whole point. I had a good time. Yeah, yeah. It's different when I go to tournaments. Yeah. So even, you know, the word champion can bring up different things for different people. Yes. Are mm -hmm. we born a champion? And what does that really mean? Um, I don't know. Just asking, you know, what does that really mean to be born a champion? You know. Well, it means we've already fought and won. Just coming out. Numerous yeah. battles. Yeah, like coming, that, coming down. That weren't out. within our control. Think about that. That weren't within our control, and yet those battles were won for us. Yeah. And we can take that as a spot of strength. That's one way to look at it. We can take that as that little spot of strength we can tap into that says, hey, there was an awful lot that went on to bring me here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it actually is. Of course, that's my thing anyway. Yeah. It all, I know. Starts, it all starts there, actually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That is where I began. Yeah. Okay, so we are at the top of the hour. I'm going to close out the recording portion and then be happy to hang out here with you. Uh, thanks, Betsy, for joining me in the live stream. Thank you in the live chat for contributing to the discussion here. And thank you for watching the replay. Betsy, you just went sideways. How'd you do that? Oh, I did it a while ago. <laughs> I, I didn't show up till just now. Oh, oh goodness. I don't know what happened. My Something rang on my, my Facebook. <laughs> rang. Oh, that was weird. Okay. <laughs> oh, are you back with us now? Okay. All right. So this is Charlene oh Burke. I'll oh, listen oh. to you. This is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Let's move forward with the day on purpose with purpose to grow our hearts, grow our minds, and grow our businesses. Until next time, have a great day.